Excuse me, who are you? Yeah. Today we're talking about perfect blue. Don't worry. I know. Excuse me, who the fuck are you? So this actually qualifies as an animated psychological thriller. It starts out and you meet Cham. And Cham is this pop idol band with these three members, Mima, Ray, and Yukiko. Mima's your main chick. Mima's trying to make the leap from pop idol to movie star. But before she can do that, she has to do TV. And that's where shit starts to get real. Originally based on a novel by Yoshikazu Takayushi. And what a novel it must have been. From what I understand, there is a little bit more information in the novel that you don't get in the movie, but that's okay, because the movie's great. Don't worry about it. You're going to get such a mind fuck from the movie, what would be left of your mind if you got your mind fucked by the book so hard. You should be expecting a fast-paced thriller that comes at you in unexpected ways and is actually very good about blurring the line between fantasy and reality, even for you, the audience, as well as your main character, Mima, because she doesn't know what the fuck is going on. You, the audience, should be expecting a what-the-fuck-is-going-on intrigue-filled, seat-grabbing, holy shitstorm. Especially if you're going at this the very first time. The end is, is so out of left field. All of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute. No way! Watching it again, obviously, I already know what's going to happen, but it's still a fantastic ride to this day. Granted, it was back in 1997, you know, because Mima's sporting an Apple IIe. Wow. And the fact that she has to explain how to use the Internet. She may as well have said, the Internet is a series of tubes. We all know how to use the internet. Shit, I wasn't alive before the internet was a thing. I knew how to use the internet. She was older than me in 97. She doesn't know how to use the internet? Come on, Mima. That's why your fish died. So we've got Mima. Mima Kirigoi, she's your main chick. She's just a small town girl from the Japanese version of the Deep South. The Deep South. I guess it's the Deep East, but that sounds wrong. We need to talk about Mima's Room. So there's this website called Mima's Room, and Mima's not the one writing it. And it's supposed to be hosted by her, Mima, right? She's supposed to be the one writing it. And she's like, ha, 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 someone really knows me. And she's clicking and clacking and going through it and goes, wait a minute, I didn't write any of this. And now all of a sudden they have detailed information that they shouldn't have unless it was her. But she's just like... Oh, well, someone's just, ah, oh, I'm a pop idol. These things happen. Are you crazy, bitch? Get out of there. Someone sent you a fax that said traitor. Holy shit. Get out of there. You've got her manager, Mr. Tadakuro. That's all you know about him. And he's kind of the reason why she stopped being a pop idol because he's not making any money on her being a pop idol. And Mima makes even less, as you can tell by her tiny-ass apartment and lack of a car. She's a pop idol. No car. Take the subway. It's rough in Japan in 97. It's probably rougher now. You meet Rumi. Rumi is also one of Mima's managers, but Rumi has a conscience because Rumi was a pop idol. It didn't work out. She didn't make it big, but now she's still in the business, and she wants Mima to aspire to heights she could never reach. It's really touching. You can see it when she comes to bat for her. She's like, no, she's not doing that shit. How dare you? We have to protect the dignity of our clients. And Mr. Tata Curl's like, no, we're not. Get that bitch naked. It's terrible. And it's true. When Cham first shows up on scene, you get your very first dose of Cham, there's no chicks anywhere. It's all dudes. They all just came out just to see these three little girls dance around in these little tiny skirts and show off their panties. It's really, really sick. And I should have been there. You get creepy-ass Mr. Mamania. It's weird and creepy. And you can tell, because as soon as this guy shows up, you're like, holy shit, who's that creepy bastard? He's like doing this. So he can see her dance in the palm of his hand. It's creepy. He, he's creepy. He's creepy. John Hinckley Jr. over here is fucking creepy. He's fucking weird looking. His teeth are all weird. He's got these weird ass eyes. He has this crazy voice. You don't expect the voice to come out of him that does, but it's menacing. 
But as someone who doesn't like to go near creepy guys, I would not fuck with that security guard. But for all I know, he's just walking around in a security guard uniform, not employed, but no one's gonna ask him about it because of how fucking creepy he is. Apparently, he's a security guard, because what's more discouraging than a creepy-ass huge guy wearing a security uniform? I wouldn't go over there. Fuck that shit. I'm not going over there. See that weird guy? Mm -mm. The scene that you get right at the beginning of the movie with Cham dancing is one of the best pieces of dancing animation that I've ever seen. They do it right. There's three of them, and they intentionally offset all their movements, so it's like they're slightly out of sync, like they would be if they were real chicks doing this for a bunch of perverts. Right? I love it. It's great. The music is, is catchy. I don't know if those were actual songs from actual pop idol groups in Japan, but the music is kind of catchy and kind of haunting, especially when you see a guy die to it. And then let's talk about the creepy music. Not the pop idol music, the creepy music. It sounds like they got bees to hum to you. They're all... If the bees were humming to bring you to your death. Things really start to unwind for Mima when she gets her picture taken by sleazy Spike Spiegel. I call him that because he looks like Spike Spiegel if he was a sleazy photographer. <laughs> Spleezgel? Sleazy Spike Spiegel. Spleezgel? Poor sleazy Spike Spiegel. But don't worry, Mima fans. This guy gets stabbed in the dick. In the dick. And we all know you shouldn't stab a guy in the dick, because that's not cool. Urgh, the dick! He got stabbed in the eye, and then in the stomach, and then in the dick! He should have just died right then! That was enough to kill a soul, but no, no, no! 75% of his body stabbed the fuck out of! It's a lot of stabbing! Jesus Christ! Don't worry, viewer, if you feel like you're going insane watching the movie, that's what the movie's supposed to do. It's supposed to make you question what is real as far as what you're watching. And it does a great job. I had to watch the movie like three times in a row just to be like, okay, wait a minute. Is she really going crazy or is this just her being confused about the movie that she's in? No, she's really, it's really happening and someone's really trying to fuck with her? Oh my God. It's true. There's a bunch of Jodie Foster references. The series that Mima's part of, Double Bind, is totally Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> you can like, hey, that's Silence of the Lambs. Wasn't Buffalo Bill skinning bitches so he could become a woman? Yeah, that's the same thing that's going on in Double Bind. And then the rape scene, the Mima's fake rape scene, that's totally the accused. <laughs> Kinda seems to be a montage of ripped off Jodie Foster movies, I'm just saying. I would say if this thing was on Blu-ray, get it. It is totally worthy. My official rating and my unofficial rating system, worthy. If it's on Blu-ray, get it on Blu-ray. If it's not on Blu-ray, buy the DVD. It's totally worth it. Do yourself a favor. If you're new to anime, don't sit down to this one yet. It's going to blow your fucking mind, and not in a good way. You need to have sat through Eva, and let's not forget Akira, the 1989 version. Fuck you, Pioneer. To appreciate this in its entirety. This is Annie View by Dave. I, of course, am Dave. If you have any questions, comments, or confusions, put them below and I will get back to you. What? And now you So her fish died. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't know how to use the internet. How are you supposed to buy your fish food? Go to the store. That's stupid. Go to the store. And let's talk about that really awkward moment when the nice guy on top of Mima had to, like, fake rape her. Because that was awkward. I'm really sorry about this. It's terrible. It's true he did apologize before it happened. That makes it okay. When Mamania gets it, he has one of the best death rattles I've ever heard. Because he totally gets a freaking hammer to the face, stands there for a second, and then goes, and dies. And it's awesome. I was telling everybody, I was like, that's the noise I'm going to make when I'm going to die. I'm going to be laying there going,
And then I'm going to be dead because I made that noise. <laughs> I'm going to go out Jerry Lewis style. And so when you meet Cham, you're like, these, these three chicks are pop idols in Japan? You know, pop idols. You know, like, we have American Idol, they have Cham. And Cham is kind of sad. You know, Jem, if you, if you take Jem out of Jem and replace it with Cham, the song kind of changes because it's not the same. You have to go, Cham, Cham is excitement. Ooh, Cham, glamour and glitter, fashion. Not so much. Fame. Cham! We came to see Cham! Cham! Panties! Panties! It's just the three of them. I saw Mima's apartment. It's like got one room. She has to use the faucet for the sink to fill up her bathtub. I don't care if that's how they make it in Japan. That's tiny. That's tiny and you're like, oh, you're a pop idol? Shit. Guys at Kinko's have bigger apartments. And a car! <laughs> the first time I watched this movie, I came away going, what the fuck was that? And I was kind of confused on how I should feel. Should I feel good about this? Did this end well? I mean, a lot of people kind of fucking died. And a lot of lives are ruined. But at the same time, you want to watch it again so you can get facts straight. Because as a participant in the viewing experience of Perfect Blue, you kind of lose track of what's actually going on and what's not happening because that's how they did it and they did it really well you you can easily get confused and you have to pay attention stoner the very first time i watched this movie i did come away feeling like i had just got fake raped only the guy on top of me didn't apologize for anything if you walk away from this going what the fuck did i just watch don't worry that's what you're supposed to think and then you're supposed to watch it again and be like oh my god that makes way more sense holy shit did that just happen at the end yeah that did just happen in the end and yes when she grabs the umbrella that's fucking penguin style batman's jurisdiction ends at gotham Mima's not a ninja she's just a pop idol and a terrible gymnast did you see the way the way other Mima can like jump from light post to light post There's a couple of face melting moments, especially at the end, but by the time the end comes around, if you're paying attention, you can figure it out, but as a first timer, you're probably not going to catch what just happened, because I didn't, and I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? She doesn't live there. Holy shit! <laughs> you could say that Perfect Blue is a nice long rape scene. You think it's the two rape scenes that you watch, but it's actually not. It's actually the rape scene that's going on in your head, because that's what's happening to you. You're getting your mind raped. You feel me fucking your mind? I'm fucking your mind right now. To your mind! Wow. What can I say other than wow? Everyone's raped and or murdered by this point. Except for the two cham girls, but you know, they're less than famous. Glamour and glitter, rape, and not so much fame. Cham! That's ter that's even worse than the first one.